these are additional notes that can connect to our pie plate and some of the stuff we've already done. Very typical question, you get one trig ratio, cos of theta is equal to 3 eighths, and then you get another piece of information telling you what quadrant it will be in. So this one, it says it's not in quadrant one, which quadrant would it be in? It has to be in quadrant four. So you can draw an angle in quadrant four. How do we know it's in quadrant four? Well, the cast rule, cos is positive, but it's not in quadrant one, so it has to be in quadrant four. And then if you draw a triangle back to your x-axis, because based on your reference angle, cos of your reference angle would be the same thing, and you can label the adjacent and the hypotenuse of that triangle. You can now do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Again, you will get really good at this in your head. What's this side? Square root of? Well, close. Close again. Not 73. You're adding, but you have the hypotenuse. Hint, hint, hint. 55. Because what's 64 minus 9? Yes, because you have the hypotenuse. And now you know what sine of theta is, and you know what tan of theta is. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and because it's in quadrant 4, it would be negative. Tan is opposite over adjacent, and because it's in, tan, in quadrant 4, tan would be negative. Is this point on the unit circle? No, it's not one of the one we've memorized, but if you think about the circle, right? If you think about the circle, we only memorize these points. Whew. Can you see that there are other points? Oh, there's another point on the unit circle. Oh, there's one that we didn't memorize. There's an infinite amount of points. Is this one of them? How would we tell? Oh, that's right. Why sh there's an infinite amount of knowledge. Why did you come to school? Oh, <laughs> you probably shouldn't. You, you should probably go home. It would make my job a lot easier. <laughs> that's right. Well. What do we know about points on the unit circle? They're cos theta comma sine theta. And one of the big ideas about the unit circle is that cos squared plus sine squared is always equal to 1. In other words, the equation of the circle is that x squared plus y squared has to equal 1 if the point is on the unit circle. If I try that with this, if I try root 3 over 3 and square plus root 6 over 3 and square, what am I going to get? 3 over 9 plus 6 over 9 And because it's equal to 1, it's on the unit circle. If it didn't equal to 1, then that point is not on the unit circle. If negative 12 over 13 
here's a point on the unit circle, and it's in quadrant 3, can you find y? I can draw a line in quadrant 3. I can make a triangle with that line in quadrant 3 and label a reference angle. Because I know the x-coordinate, I know that cos is my x-coordinate on the unit circle. So I know that cos of theta is negative 12 over 13. We have two options for labeling our triangle here. Okay? The option that I like to do when I'm labeling a triangle is cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I'm going to label this side as 12, this side as 13. Oh, there's just so much fun math. I've been holding myself back the last two examples, but I, I don't know if I, I might have to show you some interesting math after this one. Hope that's okay. So you could label it that way, okay? The way that I don't recommend is you make that 1, so that's actually the radius of the unit circle, then this side would be 12 thirteenths. Then you have to deal with a lot of fractions. You can do that if you want, but trig ratios work no matter how big or how small the triangles are. Yes? And you could also do for this question, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. So sine squared of theta is 1 minus cos squared theta and square root. I find that drawing the triangle is the easiest. Okay? If you draw the triangle, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, you could solve for this other side. Does anybody recognize this triangle? It's a famous triangle. Yeah, because it works out to a nice number on all three sides, which is what I'm going to get off topic on. Nice triangle. But we'll finish this question first. So, 5, 12, 13. The y coordinate is sine of theta. I know from here that sine of theta would be opposite over hypotenuse, negative because it's in quadrant 3. Why would I lose marks in this question? I never did find y. I need to say, so y equals negative 5 over 13. The question says solve for y. You need to have y equals in the end somewhere. You can't just assume that everybody else will fill in the blanks for what you didn't know. If you did any of these other techniques, it would have worked as well. The unit circle, if this is 13, my unit circle is just this tiny little circle right there because its radius would be 1. But with trigonometry, no matter how big or how small the triangle is, the ratios stay the same. Oh, yeah, I said I get off topic with 5, 12, and 13 because... How many people recognize that triangle, 3, 4, 5? It's not a multiple of it. You're right, 3, 4, 5 works, and any multiple, like 6, 8, 10, that works out perfectly. Whenever the numbers work out perfectly, it's called a Pythagorean triplet. The numbers are nice. 3, 4, 5 is the smallest one that works out nice. Then the next one is the one that we just drew, 5, 12, 13. I'm going to show you the next one, and then I want you to see if you can figure out a pattern that you could find another one after that. So the next one I'm going to draw for you has a 7 here, a 24 here, and a 25 there. Your job is to look for patterns and tell me what you think are some of the numbers on the next one? Nine, good. Yeah, the next one has a nine there. Seven squared is 
Seven squared is 49. 24 and 25 is 49. Nine squared is? 40 is 81. 40 and 41 makes 81. So 25 squared is 625. You need two numbers. I mean, you divide this by two, you get 312.5. So 312 and 313. And it works every single time. Like, it's fascinating. Like, you check it out, 25 squared plus 312 squared, enter, square root that, square root that answer, and it's 313. Crazy. So this is one pattern of Pythagorean triplets. Not all Pythagorean triplets follow this pattern. There's, of course, other interesting ones that we'll come across. There's another one. But, well, on the test, if often they'll have these ones embedded, and then if you know them, you can just write the answer down right away instead of having to do the mental math of 7 squared 49 plus 24 squared 576 equals 625, 36, 25, 25. You don't have to do that mental math. Anyways, so I like patterns like this and numbers and finding out different ways to figure them out. Okay. Next thing we're going to look at is locating a quadrant of an angle because we're often going to be dealing with angles past 360 degrees. And we'll look at what you'd be able to do if you had a calculator and what you'd be able to do if you didn't have a calculator. Because a lot of your test is non-calculator. A lot of your exam is non-calculator. So if you had 4,300 degrees and you divide it by 360, which is once around, this would tell you that it went 11.94 times around. Does it make sense from the decimal that it's in quadrant 4? You went 11 full times around, and then the fact that this decimal is in the last three quarters makes it in quadrant four. If you didn't have a calculator, you could just start subtracting 360 until you found out what it was coterminal with. So I would probably, mathematically, I would say, I'm going to subtract 360 10 times because that's easy to do in my head. 360 times 10. What does that give me? 400, 700 left. That's still passed too many times. I could subtract 360 again. That gives me 340 degrees. 340 degrees is in quadrant 4. So I could figure it out that way. A little bit tedious but not too bad. In radians, you could do the same thing, but usually radians are without a calculator. I mean, you could take negative 23 pi over 6 and divide it by 2 pi to find out how many revolutions it is as a decimal, and then go from there. Just, just a quick check here. On the top, I'll have negative 23 pi divided by 6, and if I divide that by 2 pi, I get a fraction. I want to change that to a decimal. I get negative 1.9. If you went negative once all the way around the circle in the negative direction, and then you went another negative 0.9, can you see that that would end in quadrant 1, going in the negative direction? But this question is one where we're not using a calculator. And for radians, it's helpful to take the number in front and change it to a mixed fraction. Remember how to do that? How many sixes and 23? Three full ones, five left over. And then you would have negative 3, so negative 23 pi over 6, is equal to negative 3 and 5 sixths pi. 
And now you're thinking in terms of pi, not full revolutions. A full revolution is 2 pi. A pi is a half revolution. So in standard position, if I started here and I went to here, that would be negative pi. To here would be negative 2 pi. To here again would be negative 3 pi. Does it make sense that odd numbers of pi will be on your negative x-axis? And even numbers of pi would be on your positive x-axis. And then your second part of your fraction, the 5 6 you're really just checking is that bigger than half or less than half. Because 5 6 is more than a half, I'm going to have to go more than a half way around. And I end in quadrant 1. So changing it to a mixed fraction allows me to find out that that's in quadrant 1. The nice thing about radians is you would know that this is, it says, state the first positive angle it's coterminal with. It is going to be, I think it's on our next slide. It's coterminal with pi over 6. The fact that our first fraction was a pi over 6 and was in lowest terms means that it's going to be related to the pi over 6 family. If you know it ended in quadrant 1, What's the pi over 6 family in quadrant 1? Pi over 6. If it ended in a different quadrant, then you would be able to say, oh, it ended in quadrant 2. Therefore, it would have to be 5 pi over 6. So our next assignment or our next homework thing that we're going to work on for the rest of the class, a couple together. So there's two assignments. Assignment 1 is that you need to locate the angle Ignore the sine or cos in assignment one, and you need to state the angle that is coterminal in the first positive revolution. So, for example, if we look at question number one, 13 pi over 6. 13 pi over 6 as a mixed fraction is 2 and 1 sixth pi. If I think about my unit circle, starting here, this would be. 1 pi, 2 pi, and 1 6 more is less than half. It's going to end in quadrant 1. So I know that the first one is in quadrant 1, and it's coterminal with pi over 6. Let's do number 5, just because it's a bigger number. 101 pi over 4. How many fours go into 101? 25 of them would make 100, and you would have one left over. On your unit circle, 25 is going to end here because it's an odd number, right? Because you go 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6, then 7, then 8, and so on and so on. Odd number is going to end here. A quarter is going to end in, because it's less than half, quadrant 3. So I would know this one's in quadrant 3. What's your pi over 4 family member in quadrant 3? And this is where if you have some tricks for memorizing your radians, it's quadrant 3, it's always one more than the denominator. Anybody recognize that pattern yet? 5 pi over 4, it's 4 pi over 3, it's 7 pi over 6. Because it's in quadrant 3. You want to write the one that it's coterminal with. So that's assignment 1. Assignment 2 is using your pi plate to actually, for questions 1 to 8, find the coordinates. So in question 1, pi over 6, what are my coordinates pi over 6? Root 3 over 2 comma 1 half from your pi plate, unless, or from your memory, right? 5 pi over 4, negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2 from your unit circle. And then once you get to question number 9, you actually have to figure out what is sine of negative pi over 4. 
It's equal to negative root 2 over 2. So practicing your memorization and practicing, right? Often you'll have to have your circle there to look at. And then some of them are in degrees a little bit later. Yes. 